that was. Uh, <laughs> I, I genuinely hope I can live up to that um, introduction. Thank you very much. And sorry about the uh, technical issues, but we are here now. Uh, my name is Chris Gannon. Uh, I'm an interactive designer and animator. That's what it says. Um, uh, I, I usually um, put the word, uh, describe myself as an illustrator as well, but um, a couple of people pointed out that I look like Kim Jong-un uh, in this particular one, so I need to sort of, I need to deal with that at some point. Um, uh, interactive web animation is what I want to talk to you about today. Um, I mainly use SVG uh, because it's scalable, it's a vector format. Who uses SVG? Yay! Right, um, uh, so I, use, I, I mostly animate uh, with JavaScript, um, very rarely CSS. I don't know why I won a CSS design award, because I don't, I don't even like CSS. Um, uh, so anyway, I've got loads of stuff to, to talk about. This is the only boring list I'm going to show you. Everything else is all visual stuff. Um, when I do talks, which is never, um, I... I tell people that I want to do all these things, improve user experience, improve workflow and everything, but really, um, I kind of want to just experiment and stuff and have fun. You know, I want to inject some of my personality uh, into, into what I'm doing, uh, and, you know, I don't really want to focus too much on these kind of things that uh, are too serious. Uh, so I want to talk about sliders, because I love sliders. Um, and I make loads of sliders. I'm not going to show you that many sliders. I'm just going to show you the ones that um, I particularly like. Um, the thing about sliders is um, it's kind of a journey. It's sort of, it's either zero to 100%, but it can also be um, uh, a sort of a, a, a range of things. So, um, uh, for example, oh, I'll just skip across one. This is, uh, we, live in, we live in this age of sort of social media where nobody really wants to talk to each other. They just want to sort of send emojis to each other. And so I made this, um, this is like a sort of a, a slider where you can just tell people how you are. I'm cool. Uh, or you can, uh, and you can just send these, I'm angry. Uh, and just, just make, it, make a sort of a nice, fun little slider. A lot of the stuff I make is mobile first, so it's, um, it's not necessarily that easy to, but you can just kind of throw it along and toss it and, uh, and generally sort of send your emotions to people without actually speaking to them, which is what most people want to do nowadays. Um, <laughs> this one uh, is a balloon slider. When I, when I take on a UI element, um, I usually want to... Uh, do what um, es Essen was saying, just, step, just put one foot outside of what's familiar. There's no point in going completely overboard and making something completely crazy because people won't respond to it. Um, I think if you t make something that's a little bit familiar um, uh, and then just, uh, you know, um, keep things familiar but then just take a little step forward, then uh, people respond to it. And this one is, this is called Balloon Slider. Uh, and... Um, one thing about sliders that I found is that when you're sliding them, you don't know what the value is while you're sliding it. So I thought, well, I'll stick a little sort of like rubbery balloon above, uh, and, uh, and you can see, which is kind of, and you can throw it as well, which is cool. I love being able to throw stuff. Um, what's next? Uh, oh, yeah. Um, so this is, this is a, I got a bit obsessed with graphs for a while, uh, and I wanted to um, have a graph that you could drag along a path uh, and again, taking something from the last, from the, from the balloon sliders, having that sort of the value that's, that's above it and so it's away from your finger, you know, as you're dragging it. Uh, and so you can see that, um, uh, the value quite easily when you drag it. And uh, it's a bit hard-coded, this one, but um, you could make it dynamic if you wanted to. So, um, and you can throw it, of course. <laughs> you can throw everything in. Toggles. I love toggles. I don't know why, because they're, they're, quite, they're quite binary things. It's either, it's either that or it's not that. Um, but that's the problem. They're either that or they're not that. I, I like toggles that are that, or actually something else. Uh, and so I'll uh, show you a toggle. This is a toggle. Again, the social media aspect of things. Nobody wants to talk to each other. How are you? <laughs> well, I am, you know, I'm happy. Uh, I'm, this was kind of an experiment in, um, uh, in two, what's called, two, what people call 2.5D. Uh, and it's, it's, it's creating 3D effects with, uh, with 2D vectors, because essentially SVG is 2D. Uh, and, uh, and, and I wanted to sort of create something that looked like it was a sphere that was turning. It's not really, it's just magic. Uh, it's not magic. Uh, what's next? Oh, yes, um, egg. <laughs> 
The, I published this. I didn't actually publish this that long ago, and it went completely viral. I've I no idea why, and uh, like people sort of seem to really respond to it. Um, it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> you know, I I actually tried putting this in, in a web page, like a hundred of. I know there were forty nine of them, uh, and it just looked like oh, it looked like your worst nightmare if you didn't like eggs. Um, but you can say, I, you know, uh, it's, I, I imagine if you go into a restaurant, you want to do eggs. Do you want them? Do you want over easy or whatever they call it, or do you want it flipped? Or, anyway, so and uh, one of the nice things that I once I, I sent this around. Someone said, "Thanks for putting something charming in my overwhelmingly grim feed this morning." And I, I wanted to include that because um, uh, when I do all these kinds of things, uh, you know, the, that sort of, that sort of feedback is you know means the most to me. You know, it just it lifts people. And you know, as when again we're saying about um, everything's homogenized and everything's quite boring and, and serious, and I, I want to escape from that, and I want to do some, some much more fun stuff that, that lifts people and makes interacting with stuff um, more interesting. Um, so loaders, I love loaders. Loaders have become so much more than um, like an animation while you wait for something. They're like brand reinforcement. You know, I get companies coming to me and saying, can you make a loader? We have a lot of content. Um, and uh, it has to represent their brand. It, it shows that we as a, as a brand understand that you have to wait for our content and we want to spend time keeping you entertained whilst you wait for that content. And I think it's, real, it's, it's, um, I think it's very much very important for brands uh, to, to do this and it shows that you care about people. Uh, this has actually got a slider because I just want to, um, I want to be able to simulate the loading. So this is something I did for a video site um, and it's it sort of like, a, it, it wobbles, as it loads, it sort of wobbles and then and when it's finished, uh, it does a little, oh, a little splash. Oh, I love that splash. And the nice thing about that splash, <laughs> The, the nice thing about that, because it's going to be on a video site, and there's going to be a lot of videos, and then, then suddenly it's ready to play. Um, it is actually a dynamic particle system, so every time you see it is different. Uh, and I, I know that. No one else knows that. But, um, uh, you know, I, I think... I talk about random in a minute, but I think there's something about randomness that really humans really respond to. Uh, and um, whether you know something's random or not, you respond to it as a human, I think. Uh, this, <laughs> this, this, I'll show you, I'll just show you. It's a drag, to, it's a drag to release thing. And the idea was uh, astronauts went up to space, they got your data, they made friends with a Martian, the Martian got very sad when you left. That's basically, that's it. So like, oh, we've got the data, come on boys, let's go. Like, oh no, oh bye. Oh, and you go down and everything. Uh, and, and it's just something a bit more, um, you know, just adds a little bit of a story, a bit something extra to, um, to a process that is ultimately boring waiting. Um, Ikea, did a loader for Ikea, and um, I kind of thought, well, what's the most icon iconic thing about um, Ikea? And it, and it really isn't like those uncomfortable seats and it's those lip-shaped sofas and stuff. It's, it's the pencil for me. And I kind of thought, oh, well, let's get all meta on it and let's have the pencil drawing the loader and then, it's very, very, very clever. Uh, they didn't think so, actually. They didn't use it. <laughs> Squirrel loader. <laughs> Um, so there was this, um, this, this video went out online and someone was like, oh, look at this video. It's a squirrel, like, <laughs> moving. Do you know what's coming? And someone said, someone on CodePen, oh, hang on, this is, this, is, this is popped out of its little thingy jobby. Someone on CodePen uh, needs to uh, craft this into a preload. I'm like, I've got you. I'm there. <laughs> I'm so there. And the nice thing is, you can actually plug this directly into a squirrel, uh, and it will detect how much snow that is cleared. <laughs> no, one, no one other UI elements do that. That's got the acorn at the end. Dials. I love dials. Oh, I love dials. Because dials are, again, they're like sliders. They're a, they're a journey. You know, they're uh, zero to 100%, uh, or they are uh, you know, infinite, and they're a range of things. So, you know, there's, there's a whole load of stuff you can do with that. Um, Who's heard of the nest? Yeah. You know the nest. Yeah, I always wanted a nest, and I have never really, got, I never got my, my, you know, I never bought one. Uh, so I, instead, I thought I'd make my own kind of version of the nest. This is a bit more serious, this one. Uh, but what I wanted to do is I wanted to make a dial that had multiple different scales, 
um, uh, that you can, in fact, I think I can, yeah, you can use my mouse on it, not that it's designed for a mouse. Uh, and so you can have the lighting, which would be a scale of zero to 100%. You can have volume, oops, you can have volume, uh, which is uh, a different range. And then if you can, you've got your air temperature, which is a different range again, 10 to, 10 to um, and you can throw it as well, look. <laughs> Everything is throwable. Um, and, yeah, it's, it's a dynamic sort of uh, a dial that you can have lots of different scales. And it was just really another experiment to see whether those kinds of things were possible, making essentially a dial much more flexible and uh, usable. And I, if there are any, any uh, dial manufacturers here, please. Who likes Wally? Remember the film Wally? Yeah! I love Wally, and I love all the design of Wally. And so I decided to make a dial. Um, based on the plant. Um, do you remember the plant that they were looking for? Yeah, I just made a dial on that. I don't know why. <laughs> I, was, I, kinda, I think I was practicing, but I also like, nicked all, a load of design elements and stuff. And, uh, you know, all practice. Everything is practice. Practice, practice, practice. Um, animation. I, I kind of use this as a separate kind of uh, part of a, of a talk because... There are, there are uh, things that, they're not just buttons, they're not presses, they're like animations that um, are triggered by actions. So, uh, and this was one of my first talks I ever did. I actually did a live code of it. The four, first talk I ever did was a live coding, and I live coded this, uh, which was a massive, massive mistake. Um, <laughs> although it kind of went all right, thankfully. But yeah, this was like a sort of an experiment in making sure that I can have... Um, I, I can do things like, if I don't drag it enough, it doesn't go down. Uh, and, you know, it, it doesn't set. Just like a toaster. I wanted to mimic the real, um, uh, uh, how, how a toaster really works, I suppose. I mean, it doesn't, essentially, it doesn't really pop the toaster up and spin it around like that. It would be, it'd be lovely if it did, but it actually doesn't. Uh, any toaster makers in here? That's how toast should come out. Fire. This is a fire. This was kind of a loader as well. But I also designed, um, um, you can poke the fire. That's all it does. But it was designed to be, you know, like those um, people who, who have uh, big HD TVs, but they haven't got a fireplace, and you kind of put the, 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 the fire on your wall on a nice HD thing, and every time you, know, you can just go walk past and just press it and poke it. And that's pretty much what it was for. That's it. People have bought this off me. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, uh, and this is called Isomet Truck because it's it's I, I want it, I, got, I suddenly got like really uh, like obsessed with isometric stuff and I think I was playing Monument Valley at the time and I was like oh let's do some weird sort of optical illusion stuff uh, and again it was just a practice to see if I could do that and I I sort of well I can't do Monument Valley stuff that's like really. Uh, so in some of the sliders that I, I have shown, you'll notice that there's, there's um, something that we refer, people refer to as, as goo. And I want to sort of talk a little bit about, very quickly, how, about how that works. Uh, and goo is, is where things seem li liquidy. And um, it, 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 it really can add quite a lot to, um, to, to your interaction if you've got this uh, applied. And what it is, is, it's pretty simple, really. You have a group of elements. You blur them. So if I just drag this slider up, it adds a blur to it. Um, and once you've blurred it, you notice all the edges all start sort of mingling together. And then you boost um, all of those transparent edges uh, up to 100% again. And that's pretty much goo. And you can and you can move things you can move things away from each other, and as you move them, they sort of join because they're essentially being blurred. But then all that just so I just wanted to uh, demystify that because a lot of people are asking, "Oh, what's this goo?" And I'm like, oh, let's. Um, you can add goo to everything, and I add goo to everything. I'm like, that's quite nice, um, but that's nicer. Uh, it's very CPU intensive, um, so um, be responsible with your goo. Uh, buttons. I like buttons. I basically like anything where I'm poking and sliding and throwing. And, um, and I made these buttons. Uh, these ones on the side here, I was like, yeah, that's all right. Oh, do you know what? I had a bit of goo. <laughs> and it works. Uh, I've actually, on my YouTube channel, you can go and learn how to, learn how to do that uh, in my sort of stilted YouTube unedited uh, videos that I make. Uh, this is called Page Hopper. Um, 
I, I suppose I wanted to take this, I wanted to have a look at pagination and take the whole pagination thing just a little bit further. And I wanted to infer that there was, actually this dot was kind of running around behind the screen uh, and you can kind of see it sort of, I need to be over there. I need to be over there. Oh, no, I need to be here now. Oh no, I'm just here. Uh, and so that was, that was, there was a bit of an experiment in trying to give the page a little bit of depth. Uh, and um, I took that a little bit further with uh, actually a job. Someone saw that and they said, can you make a kiosk for us? Um, which has a similar, uh, similar sort of thing where, you, where you've got the, um, the sort of depth to the screen. Uh, it's a bit more serious, this one. There's no goo in it for a start. And there's no throwing, which is really annoying. It's like, can I have some throwing? No, no, no. It's a kiosk. You don't throw things in a kiosk. Uh, anyway, so that's that. Um, what's next? Oh, yes. Um, and so this was a, um, uh, uh, something for a, a, an audio site. It was simply a very, it was, it was a like and dislike. Very, very simple. Um, and the really, reason why I want to talk about this one very quickly is because when I make animations, um, often there's quite a lot of code. Uh, and often I'm doing things for clients who aren't code savvy, which is fine. Um, and so I think it's when, you know, going back to my first boring list slide, um, helping, ex helping customers, um, uh, helping clients uh, with the thing that you've made. And, and with this, I just wanted to, um, instead of having, a, oh, it's a my timeline dot play or my timeline dot go to whatever, I actually just created a very simple API, wrapped it up and said, you can, you can do you my anim dot click fave, set fave, set unfave, click on fave. That's it. That's all. I, that's, and uh, they were very happy with that because it was just it was just thinking about sort of uh, because there's no point in delivering something to a client um, if they don't know how to use it. They're just like Ugh, you know like, oh. um, the power of random. This is random. This thing in the background, but it's random within a framework, uh, and that's kind of what I like. Um, I love random stuff that has has a sort of a, uh, it's, it's, it has a framework, but really it's told to do anything it likes in the middle. Um, uh, and so I just want to talk about some random stuff. Um, so this is uh, um, a, uh, what is this? This is a lava lamp that I made. Um, and it's got goo, naturally. Uh, and in fact, this was, uh, I did a tutorial on this because I was so, like, I was so fascinated with the whole sort of thing that, uh, and people, people bought this off me as well. Uh, and it can, it can sit there and it literally will be random every single time. And the way I've added randomness is just by adding randomness to a couple of things. As the, as the blobs go down and they sort of disappear into the little sort of top or bottom bit, they just shift in a random way. They also decide how long the next duration is. Um, for when they go past each other. And just changing those two things to be random makes the whole thing, completely, the whole thing seem completely random. You'll never see the same thing twice. Um, and uh, again, same, same thing with this. It's called goo bubble. Uh, and um, it has the same set of rules applied to it. The framework is essentially uh, two ripples that just do that. No, they sort of like, goes that, that and then it loops around, like the ripple thing. But essentially, all the things that are, p are popping out they go up and they go down, hard coded, and then they go, oh, I'm going to go over here, go up, go down, oh, I'm going to go over here. And that's it. That's the only amount of um, randomness that's added to it, yet the whole thing seems a lot more random than the actual code that, that was required. Uh, same for this. This is called love and bubbles, because that's all we need. We need love and bubbles and goo. Uh, and um, the, the speed at which they come out is the same, but really how they pop, when they pop, what comes out, whether it's a bubble or a heart, is random, uh, and you know, it's, uh, people respond to this. I, uh, you know, I, people, I have lots of uh, messages from people saying they love this stuff. And um, uh, when are you going to get a proper job? <laughs> uh, this is this is uh, something that I made. For, uh, and again, this this harks back to um, uh, helping clients out with the thing that you're going to make. I, I made this for a very a very uh, an online re retailer you may know. Um, uh, and it's a, it's a particle generator, and it's for, it's for, it's for one of their um, shopping sort of video sites. Uh, and I was dealing with a, a group of five or, uh, whoops, it's going a bit crazy now. Um, I was dealing with a group of five or six people, and they all wanted an explosion. And I knew, and they were also based in Seattle. Um, and I knew that it was going to be impossible for me to create an explosion that they could all agree on. Uh, and so I basically made them this tool 
uh, that creates an explosion for them. Uh, and then I built the actual thing later that played back the explosion. So I could say, right, here's a tool. Go and make some explosions. You can decide. And when you have decided what you like, you can click this button here and all this data here, send it to me in an email and I will plug it into my machine uh, and it will play back the thing. And they, they thought that was great and it saved me a whole lot of you know, time difference and all that sort of stuff. Uh, so yeah, that was, um, that was useful. Interactive tools. Who uses After Effects? Anyone? Oh, a few people. Oh, cool. Anyone heard of Body Moving? Yes! Body Moving basically is a, is a renderer uh, from After Effects. So if you're animating with just shape layers and vectors, uh, you can export um, your animation to a JSON file. And that JSON file can be played back as an SVG animation a, uh, in the browser, in a div, basically, with a, with a JavaScript player. That's it. It's very, very portable. Uh, and uh, so Newton is like a Newton for d d doing um, physics stuff and rubber hoses for arms and legs uh, and character animation, that sort of thing. Um, if I'm not doing stuff with, uh, I'm, uh, with body moving and After Effects, I'm doing stuff with Greensock. Anyone use Greensock? Yeah, more people actually. Greensock has been around for a long time. Uh, in, in the Flash days, it was an, am, uh, it was a, it was an animation library, uh, and you know, Tween Max uh, is the is the main library. And then you, uh, these are the things that I mainly use: Draw SVG, Morph S Draw for drawing lines, Morph for morphing shapes, Physics 2D for you know like like um, particle splats and that sort of stuff, uh, and Throw Props plugin and Draggable. Throw props, uh, throw props uh, for uh, pl plugs into draggable and it allows you to sort of drag things and then throw them. I uh, use it all the time. Uh, and this, okay, so this is like a process. This is mainly how I sort of create uh, JavaScript sort of green sock stuff. I draw stuff, stick it into Illustrator. Any Illustrator users? Yeah, oh, cool, oh, cool. Um, Create what I need, uh, and then uh, export that to an SVG, just a file. I never use the file SVG other than in, in this particular instance. Open it up in Sublime Text or whatever. Uh, they I had made these slides, and then they changed their logo. And I was like, oh! So I had to go and redraw their logo. Um, uh, and then uh, so take it up to CodePen. Any CodePen users? Yeah, quite a few. Good. Um, uh, and then animate, stick it, uh, paste it all into CodePen and then animate it with GreenSock. If you use Illustrator and you're using Save As um, SVG, I urge you to try and use the, asport, uh, the asset export panel because it creates much cleaner SVGs. Uh, and I just wanted to show you this particular animation. Uh, the, way, the way I build stuff is I, don't t I tend to like, draw something uh, and then I tend to draw something and then save it and then bring it into the page and then draw something else, save it, bring it into the page. Because otherwise, if you do a whole, draw a whole scene and then save the whole lot as an SVG and then copy the whole lot into your page, you, you just end up with this, this sort of huge wad of code that you have no idea what, like what it is and what it does. And I think if you build it up in, in, in pieces, uh, then um, you have much more of a, uh, a fighting chance of understanding sort of what you've done. Uh, and so this is kind of the thing, uh, the image at the bottom is basically what I drew uh, in Illustrator. And I take the handles, I take the, 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 the little pen nib or whatever and take that, uh, export them all separately. Uh, and then animate them um, and create references like ver JavaScript variable references. And again for this, uh, the splat button was essentially just like a, a sparky line sort of thing and a couple of circles, pretty much, pretty much it. And then animate it with draw SVG uh, and add goo. Course. Um, so, anyone, if anyone uses GreenSock, I just wanted to urge you to, uh, if you don't use Stagger and Cycle, please start using Stagger and Cycle because it is the most flexible, um, you can do the most stuff in the least amount of code. Uh, stagger and Cycle basically tells a group of things to go and do something, but the Stagger part tells them to do them like maybe uh, like after, uh, do one thing and then uh, do something else about half a second later or whatever your offset is. And then Cycle will tell all those things. Stagger basically tells them all to go and do the same thing. Cycle will loop through and say, right, you first one, you go over there. You second one, you can go and do that. And third one, you go and do that. Uh, and so this particular example below is a very simple example. The actual SVG is one rectangle, one white rectangle. That's it. Uh, and I've told them all to, I've just passed a, uh, an array of, of colors in, and I say, right, all rectangles, you go to red, you go to orange, you go to green, you go to blue, you go to yellow, et cetera. Uh, and, but you can do it with any, any, any value at all. Like the fire, when I clicked the fire, and it was like going, 
um, all of their eases were cycled eases. So the first ease was like a sort of a slow motion ease. The next one was like a curl ease. The second one was like a, a power two ease out ease. Uh, and then it would cycle back. So uh, it would just, um, it's so powerful. Uh, and I use it on every single project. Uh, People ask me where, uh, where I get my inspiration from in terms of like, things like colour and that sort of thing. And I am not a colour wizard. I go here. And I basically have a colour I like and I, and I basically plug it in and go, I like this colour, what, what goes with it? Uh, and it tells me. And I use them. And I go, hey, I'm great at colour. Uh, uh, noun project. If somebody uh, or a client comes to me and say, right, we, um, uh, you know, we want you to do X, Y, and Z. This is our product. I'm doing something for... Um, uh, a, 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 like a suit, they're, 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 doing, they're trying to disrupt suits at the moment, like push suits. Uh, and so I'll just go to the noun project and just type in suit and just see what other people's like, ideas are on what a suit looks like or how they approach the words suit. And it's super useful. Custom workflow tools. Um, these are the tools that I've made for myself to make my own, uh, the, they're interactive tools that I make uh, for myself uh, that uh, speed up my workflow. Um, uh, it, it's Scrub GSAP timeline is it's basically an invisible timeline that um, is, is it's granular control. So you can actually, if you've got a 45 second animation, you can just quickly go up to like 36 to 37 second mark and I'll show you. Uh, and it's invisible and it uses your mouse. Uh, so this is the Lottie animation. So you can see by my mouse, uh, there's a little black um, time value, and that's where you are in the in the uh, in the animation. And you can just drag it along. And this is a tool that I've made. That I've, it's open source; anyone can use it. Uh, and I use it for every single project that I do because I'm doing long animations, and I need to be able to make sure that the ball comes out, doink doink doink, uh, and all the little sort of everything is all timed right. So um, yeah, go and have go and if you use green sock uh, or body moving, I made it for body moving as well. So if you do that, then you can you can uh, you can use it for that as well. Just load the uh, uh, SVG to GIF. Uh, this is people are, were, are saying, well, how do you make your GIFs and that sort of thing? And I was using a screen capture software, which is still I still do, uh, and I, I tend to capture at half speed and then uh, blah blah blah. But uh, I decided to make a tool called SVG to GIF. You can go and download it yourself and use it. Again, it uses GreenSock timelines. You plug a GreenSock timeline into it, and it converts it into. Um, canvas frames and then spits it out as a GIF and you get like perfect, you know, there's no compression on it or anything. It looks, looks mint. Uh, quick expression. This is something I'm working on at the moment that hasn't, I haven't released because uh, it's, it, it's loads of it is broken at the moment. <laughs> Um, but I will release it, and, they're, and they're, it's like an accelerator. It's a panel of acceleration tools for me. Um, like I like to explode layers. I like to set loop out. I like randomize order and all that sort of stuff. These are things that are really tedious to do, um, and that After Effects doesn't let you do like natively within the program. So, uh, and this, uh, yeah. So there you go. Animation body moving. I wanted to talk about this very quickly because um, in oh, let's see, this didn't. Um, this was shut down. Uh, I just wanted to show you in um, After Effects that you can, when you create body moving stuff, you can actually name uh, layers in it like you would a class name. So when you actually spit your, um, your SVG out, you can actually style, um, where is it? Yeah, that one. So can you see that? Is that right? Yeah. So we go to setting lines icon. Can you see the? Um, you see it says dot center, dot cog, and dot outline, and those are just the layer names I've given it. You know, I could, I could, I could literally call them sort of anything I wanted. Blah blah blah. But um, uh, and that's this is the animation. It's a very simple animation, and it means that when I've spit, when I've when I've rendered this out, um, I can go into my, I can load it into my web page via a JSON file, which it spits out via body moving. This is body moving. Let's go back in here. Um, you render it out using the body moving render um, panel, uh, and you end up with it in a page. And this is basically, this, this sort of blob of code here is just your, 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 just your average bit of code that you need to play back the body moving file. The, the, the important bit is the file, the JSON file that you uploaded. Yeah, that's just setting as line icon for generate. Yeah. Uh, but the interesting thing here is um, uh, for a lot of web dev people, 
uh, is that you can, obviously you can change the, the background um, in CSS, but also you can, com you can completely style everything within the, um, um, so you completely change the color of it, which is, you know, if you, if you think about the power of that, when you're creating animations, especially something in a JSON file, it seems quite inaccessible. Um, but if you talk to your animator or whatever and say, look, can you just name all these um, uh, layers with class names? Uh, and, then, and then obviously tell me what they are. Uh, and then we can, um, we, yeah, we can style things. Uh, like, for example, if you, you, if you wanted to create that and just put it on separate, you know, lots of different parts of your, uh, your, your website, and you could style them and color them differently if you wanted to. So. I, Body moving hasn't been around for that long. Um, as soon as it came along, I was like, oh, right, you know, I'm, I'm going to jump back into After Effects. After Effects I've been using for like 20 years, longer probably. Uh, and, I, and I got a bit bored with film and video because it was all very flat and very sort of one-dimensional and there's no interaction with it. And I like to be able to interact, tell stories and also have feedback from, uh, you know, f from my audience, whatever, audience, users. Uh, and so I do a lot of rat rapid prototyping now in... Uh, in um, body moving. And so I very, very quickly just knock out a whole load of ideas. This was actually for um, Chris Coyer from CodePen got in touch with me and said, right, we're doing this uh, password protected area. Uh, can you uh, create an animation for us uh, for, you know, if you're correct or if you're wrong or whatever. And so I was like, right. So I just went into After Effects, did a whole load of animations, spat them out of body moving really, really quickly because I could re very, very easily reuse the, like, the password thing just to simulate, just to give them a visual idea as to what might happen. Uh, and um, when he finally just said, oh, yeah, I really like this bottom one here, I, I made it in using, you know, using proper JavaScript and uh, uh, something that's a lot smaller and a lot... Um, uh, easier to control, uh, and so you can type you type in, uh, and oh no, you're wrong, and then you can carry on typing until you know I'm all right. I mean, uh, and so yeah, that's um, and and it made the whole process of creating an idea uh, and getting it over to the client really really quick, um, because if I if I'd if I'd done that with Greensock. Um, uh, it would have taken me ages to keep completely, you know, keep recreating. I'm not saying Greensock, Greensock is great, it's really fast, but I'm just, it's my own way of producing stuff uh, is quite slow in terms of um, creating lots of ideas quickly. Uh, combining tools. Uh, oh, yes. So this, this is an egg <laughs> on a treadmill. Uh, and it's an animation that I made. Uh, I just made the egg uh, quite, a, quite a while ago. Uh, and, and again, when Body Moving came out, I think it must, must be about nine months ago now, maybe even a year, maybe longer. Um, I was like, hang on, I can, I, I can suddenly like, um, well, by the way, what you can do is you can take this slider and you can make them go really fast. Make them go really slowly. I'm exercising. And I'm going really fast. Uh, and really, this was a, another experiment, and it was basically an experiment in combining the two technologies, if you like. It was taking um, what essentially looks like a hard-coded, body-moving animation, uh, and then sticking a green sock slider on the top of it, uh, and taking that slide. You can't throw this slider, I don't think. No, you can't. Oh, I was getting real performance issues. It was like, <laughs> um, so I, I didn't do that. Uh, and uh, yeah, so it was. It re so really, what it was is like it's like a div with the body move with the body moving egg running in it, and then a green sock slider placed over the top two SVG an uh, SVG on top of a div, uh, and then the slider is controlled by JavaScript, and its progress is uh, tells the body moving um, uh, slider where to go, and then the slider tells the egg how fast to run. Oh, hey, I forgot about this. I, I could have just shown you this. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so there you go. Uh, that's that's kind of how it's how it's built. Uh, this is a Lego head that runs along with a banana. Um, but what you can do is you can change it to a microphone. I'm thinking about what, and you can also change it into a pencil uh, and an ice cream. Uh, and again, it was uh, this was more of an exercise in. Um, Creating animations uh, that I wanted to be able to swap out elements within an animation. And I kind of thought, well, the, the, the way I'm going to have to do this is by creating the animation 
uh, sorry, the things that I want to swap inside body moving uh, or inside After Effects and have them all sort of moving at the same sort of, you know, in the same uh, motion. Otherwise, I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to have to track this motion. It's going to be impossible. So essentially, I created all these things. I, I parented them all together, got him holding them. Uh, and then in, green, uh, in, in JavaScript and GreenSock, I hid everything. And then as you click, you just like go through and you, you tell one of them to hide, the other one to scale up and bounce. The next one to hide, scale up and bounce. Uh, and again, it was a nice little marriage between the two technologies. Um, uh, you know, when a new technology comes out that I'm interested in, it's not very often that I, I don't jump on all the new frameworks or anything. Uh, when something does come out that I'm interested in, um, I, you know, I really want to sort of um, combine it with the things that I already know. It, it very rarely sort of usurps the things that I know. I just add them together. Uh, and that's the whole combining tools thing is uh, it's, it's very important. Um, and, and I think when you combine stuff, you know, the sum of its parts is, is greater than the, um, you know what I mean, whatever it is, whatever that saying is, say it in your head. Um, I do a lot of Lego because I have children. Not because I have children, I love Lego anyway. Uh, and we're always like missing pieces. So I made, um, it's a responsive Lego. And so you can make your own piece. And uh, I need I need a purple piece. I need a purple two b six, and and that's really again that's all it does. <laughs> everything is an experiment, and everything is 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 a way of making sure that I know how to do things. So if a client comes to me and says, you know, I really need to do something that's really really looks really really complicated, I know or I hope I know that I can do the things that they've asked me to do. Uh, and so it's kind, of, um, uh, it's kind of empowering, learning lots, of, lots and lots of small things all the time. Uh, and then when a the client comes along, they may, may offer you a job and say, look, can you do 20 of these things that you've already learned? I'm like, um, I can, actually, because I've practiced every single one of them uh, and made like, really crazy things like eggs running and that sort of thing. Uh, so I'm going to wrap up. Um, there are more ways now uh, than ever. Uh, everything, by the way, everything in this, uh, in this talk is an SVG is an SVG animation. There's no video in it or anything like that. It's all live, rendered in the browser. And, and I think, you know, browsers have come a long way in, uh, in how they perform and how they render stuff. Uh, and so we can be a lot bolder now than, than we ever have been with SVG. Uh, and to a point, I mean, you know, uh, SVG is still vectors. And if you, you know, if you, do too, if you try and do too much, everything will grind to a halt and your users will hate you. Um, but uh, you know, if you're if you're kind of responsible and uh, and you test stuff all the time, then obviously in Chrome because everything works in Chrome, um, then uh, <laughs> uh, then uh, yeah, you'll be fine. Um, yeah, as I was just saying a, a minute ago, I, when you combine stuff, um, uh, it really can make something very rich and and uh, and, uh, and, uh, and 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 wonderful. You know, I, I want to make wonderful. Um, stuff that people um, kind of marvel at and uh, and sort of also ask. I want people to ask why as well. Like, why are you doing that? You know, as much as how. Um, I think the process uh, is as important as the final uh, for me anyway. Because I'm constantly wanting to learn all the time. I just practice all the time. People send me emails like, "How do you do this?" and "Or how do you get into this?" I'm just like practice. They're like, I don't want to hear that. I want a book that tells me. I want a video that I can skip through at two times speed that tells me how to do it. And I was like, there is no video that does that. It's just practice. You just don't talk to your wife or children for six months. You sit, you hold yourself up. No, go no away, I'm practicing. That's how you, how you learn stuff. That's how I learn stuff anyway. Um, and these are really exciting times for interactive web animation, I would say, um, because um, we can distribute the stuff that we make everywhere. You know, people can see it. And you know, SVGs are pretty small. You know, you can, uh, and they run really well. As long as you're careful, again, you could, they run on phones um, and mobile devices. Uh, and um, yeah, I'm, uh, I would like to say thank you for coming. That's it. That's it.